Okay, I don't really have a story for this. Um, from I think this is my theory. Before I show you this, I think that this game is languishing. Um, I think that like I don't know who the fuck plays it. There's no there's no talk about it. The reviews for the game are negative, but it's also like the pride and joy of the company that made it. So they have to try and keep it relevant somehow. And so they've done this. Number one, this looks like a porn skin, but apparently this is like a real thing. Overwatch 2 has officially announced that if you get level 175 in the Season 13 Battle Pass, you will unlock the um, the subtitle, like the like how in Helldivers it says Super Citizen or whatever your rank is. You'll unlock the special title, Kitten of Discord. Like, just on the nose, direct grooming, gooning reference baked into the fucking game. So, you can get your fucking bimbo porn skin for your Mercy heel slut. And then you can literally make your title the Kitten of Discord and play the game. So, I'm assuming that this is just what they're banking on. Like, Blizzard is in default. <laughs> Active Blizz is going down the fucking drain. Everybody is abandoning ship. The, the stonks are going down. I think the only thing keeping the, the entire business solvent at this point is, like, Indonesian gotcha game players that are addicted to Diablo 4. Like, I legit have no fucking idea who plays that shit. Um, but I think that's, like, where the game industry has gone as a whole. I've watched a bunch of videos. It's um, I ended up watching this guy's channel where he just like played super old MMOs that were still plugged in because they had they still generated revenue, and he would like play EverQuest and shit. It was I forget his name, but something MMO. Um, but he also did like a video series about Diablo Four or Diablo Immortal or whatever for the phone, and just how like crazy, crazy predatory. The um. The, the whole the whole system was and in terms of like exploiting its users how there was like literally 16 different currencies in the strife haze yeah josh strife haze that's him he um he plays old mmos but he also does video essays uh well, i mean he only did a video essay on diablo immortal and it was crazy how exploitative this game was in terms of having multiple different currencies, items that look near identical but have extremely important functional differences between the, the paid-for premium versions and the not-paid-for versions, and how you can literally just dump as much fucking money as you want into it. How the the games are... Like, the actual dungeons that you're supposed to do for this loot is effectively just a way to bypass the European... Pr European uh, gambling system like they have rules about gambling but there can't be any level of skill so you like put in one of your gems and then you get to play a dungeon at the dungeon you have a guaranteed number of legendary rolls but if you die while playing the dungeon and you lose you get to keep your gem so it's a very short dungeon if you lose there's no consequences and then at the end you get a fixed number of rolls. So it's technically a game of skill in the most like rudimentary possible way imaginable. Um, but it's effectively just a loot box. So it's like this crazy, crazy exploitative system designed to make people get desperate enough to put their credit card in to redeem free free loot, basically. And it makes it must make it a fucking obscene amount of money. Because I think that all the most profitable games in the world right now are those kinds of loot box games. Like, um, what are the other ones? It's like Azure Blue, I think. Some, I, I've seen that one. It's like a bunch of different anime-looking games that are like hero shooters. And then there's Genshin Impact. And, um... N Nike, yeah, Nike, that one. Like, anytime you open the Google Play Store, you just see, like, an anime hero game advertised to you. Like, hey, do you want to develop a chronic addiction to, to Skinner boxes? Like, no, I fucking don't. So that's where the gaming industry is gone. Why don't they make good games anymore? Um, back in the day, you had to make a good game in order to sell it because it would sell by word of mouth. You play Diablo 2 and you're like, holy shit, this is a fucking awesome game. You should, uh, then you tell your, like, that's how I got into it. My um, next door neighbor, when I, was, I was like in the fifth grade when that game came out. And my next door neighbor had um, parents that played World of Warcraft. Uh, they were, 
I remember this very distinctly. They were both they were in the Air Force, or at least his father was, and they were both like in huge into WoW, and they also played Diablo two when it came out. And I just remember like sitting behind them at the computer, like playing this extremely gory game that had these like the the cinematics for Diablo two at the the year they were released were like breathtaking. They look silly now if you go look them up. They they still hold up. They look bad. They look shrekish because of the era. But like the the voice acting and 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 stuff for the Diablo two cinematics still hold up as really really cool. Um. But actually, they remastered it, so you can you don't even need to, and they still hold up in the remastered version. But you played it because people told you about it. Nowadays, you play it because um, your Twitch streamer plays or whatever and gets free shit. If I started playing like, dude, I could fucking mog the weebs. If I started playing Genshin Impact to like two or three thousand people, I would immediately get like a direct sponsorship from from whatever fucking studio, and I would be like clicking the box and like all the best anime skins would pop out like immediately and everybody all the fucking weebs that watch this shit and play that fucking game were like what the fuck what <laughs> i've been i spent two hundred dollars i worked at, at whataburger for an entire week and i got a three hundred dollar check and two hundred of that went to try and get my favorite anime babe skin and he gets it his first click that's because i got the sponsorship i got that stream of privilege you would suffer suffer with envy <laughs> Chinese salad art, exactly. <laughs> I've been plotting my escape for years, boys. <laughs> um. Anyways, yeah, like I said, I I think that's just the direct. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like an Overwatch gotcha game in the future. I don't know how much money Diablo makes. Is that public? Activebuzz is a publicly traded company, right? Can I look this up. Is ActiBlizz public? Activision Blizzard merger revenue traded as ATVI. ATVI investor relations Diablo Immortal. Ooh, I found it. Activision Blizzard says in their 2023. Investor Relations report that Diablo Immortal made $2 million a day. <laughs> That's $700 million. $730 million. Um, in just by June 30th of, of 2024. That's crazy. That's a lot of money. So there you go. That's the money. That's the money pit. You got the the Indians putting their their ten dollar ruse in to get impressive skins in a fucking Skinner game. How much money do you think that Overwatch and and the the fucking re release of Warcraft and Diablo two made? Probably a pittance in comparison. A pittance. I, I'm telling you, I should get into digging into investor reports. I bet you there's all sorts of juicy shit hidden there. For um. For, for content. Oh, someone sent me a, a link. Can I pull that up? Uh, and here we go. Smith really wants me to look at this. I'll look at it. Gotcha Gaming. Sensor Tower monthly... I don't even... I've never even heard of Sensor Tower. Monthly Revenue Report. Holy shit, this is... I can't open this because it's like... Yeah, because I... If I just zoom in really, really close, I can see. Oh, okay. So it's like a bunch of different games. So in September 20... This is for the month of September 2024. Honkai Star Rail made $67 million, which is about $2 million a day. Love and Deep Space, which I've also never heard of, made $62 million in that month. Genshin Impact made 45 AFK Journey made 34 which is about half of what it made in August. Zenlist Zone Zero, also never heard of, made 34 Dragon Ball Z Dokken Battle made $33 million. Naruto Mobile made $24 million. Naruto is making almost a million dollars a day in 2024. 
Uma Masume, Pretty Derby made 23, Monster Strike made 2022 20, or 22, Fate Grand Order, which I've heard of, but I, I don't know anything about. These games all look the same. It's like an ensemble cast of anime characters that look fucking identical to each other. Arc Knights made 18. That's also an anime game, even though it sounds like it would be Western. Nikki or Nike made 14. Azure Lane made 11. Puzzles and Dragons made 10. That's the first one that doesn't look like anime. One Piece Bounty Rush made 8. Light and Night made 8. Summoner's War made 8. Reverse 1999 made 7 million. Where is, um... Where's the, the one that Dark Side Phil plays? I don't see it. Maybe it's not a part of this group. This is like one group of people. Oh, this is only one region of it. I don't even know the difference. I assume that one is like a America and one is like Asia or whatever. Yeah, it's a lot of fucking money, bro. Anyways, my point is that they're selling Discord kitten titles in Overwatch because they've lost all their revenue to other Coomer skin games. Thank you for watching this clip. This is Perspicacity. Remember to like and subscribe.